hardly a topic for laughing at. It all ties into what this PC stuff is, which is just taking all the like me and Thomas Sheridan were discussing. You know, the shadow. You can't. You can't. You can't face the shadow or do anything that's you know. In this polarity of light and dark, we've all got to go over to the light now and pretend that everything's just shiny. That, but it's all. It's even. It's so robotic and fake. It's so dangerous to me. Like, like it's why. Yeah. That's why I got into the PC comedy. Uh, getting into uh, attacking PC early because I couldn't work out how anyone couldn't excuse when when a bunch of people turned up. In the 2000s, going, oh, we're going to maybe be able to arrest you if you upset someone. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like didn't, it, didn't, it, how come now everyone in the world's got a podcast about it? And they're all intellectuals discussing it. I'm going, how come I was just listening to Black Sabbath and running around? And how come you didn't say anything then? No one likes and I told you so, but I'm sitting there going, I'm no genius or, or, or intellectual, but excuse me. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think that what's happened is that, I mean, it's very complicated, but. It's just the last 10 years has been the sort of inculcation of people's, um, you know, narcissism into what, you know, you would call it virtue signaling or whatever that um, sort of allows them to take the um, these sort of drastic moral decisions that they don't realize echo uh, throughout the sort of authoritarian holes of eternity. And the idea that you have to support the people you dislike in their ability to say what they want, because otherwise eventually it'll come for you. And that's one of the things that people who are, uh, you know, the sort of unwitting fools or what do you want to call it? You know, the useful idiots, as yeah. Mao would have said in this, in this war in parenthesis, and they don't really realize that eventually it comes for them anyway. Oh, like totally. you, you're not going to decide, you know, eventually it will come for the comedy you like and music you like. And, you know, it's, um, it's uh, yeah, we talked about this 20, 25 years ago. Um, I mean, quite a few people could see it coming, could see what was going to come, you know. <clears throat> but and also, what I think is very dangerous is, I, especially you know, like like primordial lyrics, primordial songs, right? They go, they go back into what? They go back into the collective psyche of 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 the tragedy about the nation itself. So a group of people, your forebears, yeah. have come before you, right? So what they went through, so. So you're still connected psychologically, spiritually, to your forebears. And when I see that these young kids have been, have been, uh, you know, let's go and tip statues over and say all this and do that. Not only have they turned them into these psychological foot soldiers or useless idiots, but to me, I think that the greater damage is it, it, they're giving them a sense of self-loathing, but not only into themselves and their own culture, but they have no respect or gratitude to their to the spiritual connection, the psychic connection to their forebears who have gone before them. So it's almost like a psycho spiritual genocide. Well, okay, let's say let's unpack that. I think I, I don't think you're wrong. I would use maybe slightly different words, but I think what it I think maybe what I would say is that we've taught people to be citizens of nowhere. Yep. Great description. Instead of citizens of somewhere. And citizens of nowhere. That's a great description. <laughs> when, you're, when you're a citizen of nowhere, you can be pulled up from your roots very easily. Totally. You can, you can be taught, um, you know, that two and two equals five or whatever else, you know. Um, a citizen of nowhere is very malleable and easy to control and is easy to rail. I mean, I think most of the culture war stuff is just classic divide and conquer from the, you know. The yeah, but, yeah, totally. We're arguing about, like you know nonsense but most yes. most of them, because that's they've designed it this way to keep people distracted and keep people at each other's throats but yeah citizens of nowhere and so therefore you're taught to hate as you say your ancestry your history um for all history for all it's you know um dark and light it, it is what's you know standing underneath us and if yeah. you're completely uprooted from that um yeah you, you become as i said uh, and that's what the We've talked about this before, but that's kind of what the global is. And I don't like necessarily using that word phrase generally, but that's what the global ideal is to make us citizens of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, and like, a, like, a, like, a, like, well, it's like year zero, isn't it? It's just a boring communist saying, but like, bang, you cut off the past. Yeah. And we start, we start today. Yeah. And, that's, and so a great description. You're a citizen of nowhere now, you know? Yeah. And when you're a citizen of nowhere, then why would history be important to you because yeah, why would uh, these things be of any importance or they don't why would you care about the ancient greeks the ancient romans and if you've been taught as people have done for the last while that every part of your ancestry is something negative 
Um, then why wouldn't you want to burn the entire house down? Yeah, completely. Um, you know, and I speak to young people about this kind of stuff before, and I mean, I don't necessarily blame them. I think that's too easy of an age thing to do. But when you look at some of the things they're being taught, <laughs> no, um, I blame it, I blame the school teachers who did it to them. <laughs> um, I'm, yeah, there's there's lots of different things. Again, I I think that um, I think the world is a chaotic place whereby finding a linear structure or finding nodes of influence or whatever you want to say, people like to we it's our nature to try and find meaning on this rock that's hurtling through space. And sometimes I think that there's some to just give in to the idea that some things, some things are just chaotic. And instead of there being one grand narrative, maybe there's 50 competing narratives which converge and coalesce into this seems like the most dominant narrative at this moment, and it might swing another way. But <clears throat> I, I kind of subscribe to that. But at the same time, it is clear to me that many of these converging um, ideals are pushing this sort of, as you say, this narrative of um, uprooting people and telling them that their um, ancestry or history has no meaning or that um, their history is negative or that or, you know, which is a really, you know, facile and sort of evil claim is that um, your ancestor, you know, and you have inherited guilt, your ancestry, people huh. you never who have no connection to you are responsible for X and Y. Um, which is, you know, the idea that somebody from your... Oh, guess, that goes right into Christ, Christian thinking, too. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, that's... Well, You've that's inherited what, sin through birth. So. That's, that's original sin. We're from... The, I'm from the country that, you know... I mean, if there was an, if there was an original sin Olympics, we'd be... We'd get the gold medal, you know, of, of, of guilt. But, <laughs> you know, we do, we do pretty well in the paedophile Olympics as well. But, uh, <laughs> we, beat, we beat Belgium in the final on penalty. <laughs> <panel. laughs> Yeah. Anyway, cut that out if you want. No, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's religious, which is orthodoxy, which states that you have inherited original sin. And like I've had this conversation with people in America and they've said to me, and I've gone, look, I'm I'm Irish. If you want to play that game, we can go into Irish history. The idea that the whole of the West and all of Europe, whether you're from Belarus, Finland, Portugal, Switzerland, Luxembourg, Serbia. And that everyone has a blanket original sin of history is just patently wrong. It's just historically inaccurate, and it's just um, it's a pernicious myth that yeah, yeah. People, people who are historically illiterate just keep repeating. But I, I've had conversations with people. I've gone, you know, we've talked about things, and I said, okay, that's not true, and here's why. And I've looked at them and gone, you're going to say the same thing tomorrow, aren't you? Because oh. you know, doubling down is a is a virtue. Man, so, man, but that, but that first creator album, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Feel the endless pain. Yeah. <laughs> right. 